this here is another viewer's broken gaming PC, and it apparently has trouble booting into Windows. Now for a bit of context, most of the components in here are rather new. A 5800X 3D, 48 gigs of RAM, I think it's a 32 gig kit, and then a 16 gig kit, but at least they look the same. They're of course their Vengeance RGB modules, and then a 7900 XT from AMD. But I highly doubt these major components are keeping the system from booting into the operating system. There are more than a few accounts of Samsung 980 Pros, 990 Pros, 870 Evos, etc., especially higher capacity SKUs, dying prematurely. And this became such a big issue, in fact, that Samsung pushed firmware updates to many of these devices in order to prevent future failures. Unfortunately for this viewer, however, he never pushed that firmware update through. And now that his drive, I suspect, is already experiencing symptoms, it is too late to update the firmware. The damage on the hardware side has already been done, as far as I'm aware, and there's no way to get around replacing the drive, which is what I expect we'll be doing in this video, based on the symptoms and the list of parts. I could be totally wrong about all of this, but it's my hunch and something we're gonna definitely see through in this video. I hope you'll stay with me. If you're planning your next PC build, then consider checking out our sponsor, VIP SCD Key. Their Windows 10 and 11 OEM keys sell for a fraction of retail and will unlock the full potential of your OS. They'll also remove those pesky activation watermarks. Click the links below to get started today and be sure to use our special offer code SKGS for a sweet discount on a variety of options, including Windows 10 and 11, Pro and Home, and more. Hello there, and welcome to Fix or Flop. In this playlist, we attempt to fix viewers' PCs in and around the Orlando, Florida area for free. So if you or someone you know has a broken computer and you'd like a chance to have it fixed for free in this playlist, we don't charge for hardware or labor or anything like that, be sure to sign up via the form linked in this video's description. We can do this thanks to your viewership, by the way. So thank you so much for clicking on this video. If you are not already subscribed, you can click that red button down below as well. That would be a huge, huge help. Now on to the troubleshooting. The very first thing we need to do is attempt to replicate the issue described by the owner. So we'll connect both power and HDMI cables to our portable monitor. By the way, if you'd like access to any of our troubleshooting or cleaning gear, it is also all linked in the video description. The symptom we are looking for is not booting into Windows, which means that uh, the rig should fire up. It should light up, the fan should spin, we should actually get a post as well. That is going to be uh, key in this test here. So if it'll just keep booting into the BIOS, maybe it doesn't detect the Samsung drive, uh, or if it attempts to load into Windows and then freezes midway through, that is a pretty big indicator that a drive is either on its way out the door or not uh, formatted correctly or has already died. Okay, so it does look like it's trying to load into Windows. We get some spinny bubbles here. This looks like Windows 10. I wonder if it's just gonna keep spinning or if it's gonna freeze or reset. 12 o'clock midnight. Wow, it did eventually load into Windows. Uh, I wasn't expecting that. So you can see this B-roll here, it was scanning drives for a good while. In fact, the uh, the D drive was the first one that it started with, but it moved on to, it called it the H drive. Whatever it did, after about 20 minutes, it loaded into Windows here. And, and I'm actually about to connect a, I lose these dongles all the time. Uh, I'm about to connect a keyboard and mouse because I wanna see if we can get the system to like lock up or freeze or reset itself, just how stable is Windows in this current state? So I've already noticed some interesting things. Uh, the owner described a very slow, laggy system whenever he could log into Windows. And this is exactly what we're seeing here. I'm just trying to download Crystal Dismark. It's a four meg file. And you can see how, de like how delayed this is. Like I clicked it twice because nothing happened for a good 30, 40 seconds or so. And so I click download again. You can see now after about two or three minutes, it finally registers that I was trying to download it. This is not a networking issue, by the way. Uh, the separate Wi-Fi network that I use for viewers rigs uh, in the house uh, is very fast. I think four or 500 megabits per second. So um, that is not the issue. Websites seem to load very quickly, but downloading anything is just painfully slow. Also a separate topic, but I realized one of his Corsair IQ fans actually has a dead green LED. That's what it looks like here. So uh, this should be like a more aqua colored blue that involves a little bit of green light. And you can see it's not shining here, which is why this section of the fan is a darker blue. And if you look around back, this entire ring is supposed to be yellow, I think, unless it's been misconfigured in software. In order to make yellow light, when you combine LED colors, you're supposed to shine red and green. Since the green is out, we only see red here. I'm just kind of sitting here twiddling my thumbs at this point. I don't know what else I can do. I can't open a basic program like Crystal Dismark. All I wanted to prove was that the drive was running at a speed slower than what is rated from factory. And that would indicate Kate that the drive is on its way out, justification to replace it. I, I suppose the fact that it won't even open at all or is taking this long to do so is even more of a reason to just completely get rid of it. Jeez, I can't even get the system to shut down in time. Like it, it's just, it's just hanging. Like it's, 
It's not doing anything. It's not even executing basic tasks. This is awful. Let's see, I wonder if I try powering off this way. Will the system respond? Does not look like it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Wait, this is, this is toast. Oh wow, this is actually a lot of drives. Or maybe multiple partitions from two or three drives, not too sure. I haven't seen up to I in a pretty good while. I can't even get disk to show up in disk manager. It, it's just, it's taking forever to do anything. A few moments later. Oh wow, my shutdown request has finally been processed. Let's see if I can cancel that. Probably not, because I tried shutting it down like eight times. Yeah, this, <laughs> it, it literally took more than five minutes for Windows to process a shutdown request. <laughs> What on earth is this? Now I have confirmed that the BIOS does only see one boot partition, that being again, the Samsung 970 EVO Plus. And yes, the system does continue to exhibit the same long boot times here. So this has been going on for about five minutes now, and it is currently scanning each drive in the system. There are four in total also confirmed by the owner. We have the Samsung 970 EVO Plus with a one terabyte capacity. And I know what you're thinking, uh, Greg, this is a Corsair NVMe cooler, what gives? Well, the owner actually swapped an MP600 Pro XT cooler onto this because it's his boot drive. So when you see this cooler, just remember this is actually a 970 EVO Plus with Windows loaded onto it. I know, kind of strange. The second NVMe is actually the Corsair MP600 Pro XT that lost its cooler to the 970 EVO Plus, which makes sense. Although I am very aware at this point that uh, this is becoming quite convoluted. I apologize. I believe this stores primarily games as it boasts a two terabyte capacity. This SSD is what I think is an Intel 535, just a 248 capacity, also used for games or basically one Call of Duty title at this current pace. And then the fourth SSD is this one here, the Samsung 870 EVO. Now I want you to pay special attention to this date right here, February 2021. It's no coincidence that this date coincides almost perfectly with widespread reports of drive failures across the 870 EVO spectrum. There are entire forums dedicated to folks complaining about performance issues and consistencies when it comes to loading into Windows and outright drive failures resulting in BIOSes not detecting said drives and it just being a massive cluster for everyone involved. If this date said something like February of 2023, eh, maybe just a fluke thing by, by then, by, Samsung should have worked out the kinks. If they hadn't, well, I'm probably never gonna buy a Samsung drive again, at least not with the intention of storing anything important on it. But since this is a 2021 model, it, it's almost certainly falling into the same category as these reports you're seeing here. Now I've been trying to install Crystal Disk Info or rather just download it to the source drive. Of course, that's not playing nicely. So I said, you know what? Ironically using a Samsung thumb drive here, why not download Crystal Disk Info on my personal rig and try dragging and dropping the .exe onto the viewer's machine? Here we are. Let's simply drag this over. Uh, hello? Eight hours later. Yeah, so that took a while, shocker. With Crystal Disk Info finally open, we can see the boot drive looking healthy all around, a few logged errors, but nothing debilitating. However, I was unable to pull up the Samsung 870 SATA SSD, so it's almost like Windows isn't detecting it, although a grayed out volume does infrequently appear within Task Manager and the Drives tab. This is almost certainly a failing drive, and even though it's not the primary boot source, it's clearly having a profound effect on the day-to-day -day usability of the operating system. It's just an awful, awful experience. I frankly give the owner credit for being as patient as he has been over the past few weeks. I'm not sure how he put up with this. There's no way I could have. There we are finally into Windows again, uh, but this is unusable. The drive needs to be replaced. That's exactly what we're gonna do now. Day two. Well, okay, I had to wait a day because I had to order one of these two and a half inch SATA drives. I do have a couple in the office, but they are not the right capacities for what he's after. I actually upgraded him with this one. This is a silicon power one terabyte A55. He's coming from a 500 gig 870 Evo. So a nice doubling of the storage there. And I expect this will now play nicely with his pre-existing boot partition on the 970 Evo Plus in VME. But before we go any further, I'd like to inform you what I plan to do with this failing SSD. Absolutely nothing. I'm not a data recovery specialist and pretending like I am is only gonna create issues down the line. If I lose any data, any photos or anything that are sensitive on this drive, I'm in trouble. My brand, my reputation's in trouble and uh, that's gonna suck for the owner as well. So I'm not gonna touch this at all. I'll refer him to a data recovery specialist in the area if he's interested, uh, but this is as far as I go with data like this. Sensitive drives, I, I just, I don't want the liability, frankly. So I'm gonna set this aside for now. We'll reinstall his other 
two M.2s, as well as the Intel 2.5-inch SATA SSD, and try for one more boot. We'll make sure there aren't any conflicts, any issues there and we'll be good to go. We'll put this chunky one back up top, the second one under its respective heatsink, and lastly, it's as simple as reconnecting the SATA data and SATA power cables for the Intel 2.5 inch SSD. This needs to be just a little stronger to keep the screen from sagging, and transport, that's definitely gonna turn again. But after only a few seconds this time around, it's so much better than a few minutes, we're back to a snappy, responsive machine. I've loaded the OS onto the new Crucial drive, which you're seeing here, it's why it's blank, uh, just to run some quick tests with all of the connected SSDs, but the system now also boots into the original Windows partition on the 970 EVO Plus, and it doesn't take a century to do so. In Disk Manager, you can see that Disk 0 is the original boot drive, Disk 1 is the Intel 2.5 inch SSD, Disk 2 is the drive we just swapped in, the Silicon Power A55, and Disk 3 is the 2 terabyte MP600 Pro XT. Everything now looks happy and healthy, and most importantly, we were able to preserve the original Windows partition after isolating a problematic second drive. And another piece of information that was just shared with me is that this dying drive was actually cloned and originally stored the operating system. So that could explain why we're seeing weird drive within drive scenarios with D and H, and why this screen looks, well, odd. Every time I had to reset the system, I just went out aside. I just touched grass. Like I, I had nothing better to do for the next 10 or 20 minutes that it took for the system to fire up. Such a shame that so many of these 870 EVOs and other various Samsung drives have been plagued by firmware issues. Apparently it has something to do with the way that data is written and then rewritten. It, it decreases the lifespan of the drive in question when data is, is written over and over and over again. There was some bug in, I guess, some earlier versions of the firmware. Uh, that uh, shorten these lifespans. I don't know if that's exactly what's happening with this one. Something's definitely not right though, and removing it from the equation solved our problem. Thank you so much for watching this one. It's always a shame when a more modern, elegant rig like this goes down. You don't expect this in higher end, again, modern hardware. Like it's supposed to work for several years, right? I mean, most consoles work for several years unless you, do weird things to them or own an Xbox 360 from the Red Ring of Death age. I remember trying to fix the Red Ring of Death myself. I was uh, trying to, to adjust the, I think it was like the cooler X bracket on the backside of the main board. I don't think I ended up fixing it in the long run. I think I fixed it temporarily and then it came back like two days later. I thought I was like really hot stuff when I fixed it and then yeah, it, it died again. <laughs> so it was, it was short lived, but uh, you know, all those like, very early troubleshooting experiences I had, I think have ultimately led me to this point. I mean, I really do enjoy these. They are like puzzles. I know a lot of you appreciate this as well. The fact that we all just kind of together go in blind and sniff things out. Some of you come to the right conclusions before I do. And they, some of you let me know in the comment section as well how, how dumb I was for going around it the, the long way. Uh, but I, I really do appreciate your viewership. This is such a privilege to be in this position to be able to fix viewer systems for free because of you, because you guys click on these videos, all I can really say is thank you. And I hope that uh, I can continue bringing engaging content like this. I, 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 yeah, I, I'd like to keep doing that. It's a pretty cool gig. Be sure to check out relevant links in the video description. Consider subscribing again if you haven't already. Leave us a thumbs up, comment down below, and consider sticking around for the next one. My name is Greg. Thanks for learning with me.